How do you test your .NET application? Do you just mock the shit out of everything and write brittle unit tests? Or do you appropriately apply different aspects of the testing trophy? The testing trophy? Huh? What am I talking about? So for context, when I was a younger developer, I used to just write unit tests and that would end up mocking everything. And from my perspective, I thought I was killing it. I was writing textbook unit tests where I would just test little units of code because I had these mocks surrounding the code I was testing. My code coverage was high, hooray. And my code was super decoupled to allow all of this mocking because in my head, I thought any type of hard dependency was just pure evil. But in reality, as I would soon discover, my tests were brittle and not helpful. So whenever I wanted to refactor some code, I would also have to make massive changes to the tests because the tests were so closely tied to the structure of my code. So with that, I didn't really want to refactor at all because it would take so much effort, which in the end somewhat defeated the entire purpose of the tests which is the ability to regression test the code, that has changed. And of course, there was other drawbacks of just writing unit tests because, yeah, I was verifying that these little units of code were working, but I wasn't verifying that all of these units of code worked together. I wasn't verifying that my application even started or performed as expected. Now, if I had known about and understood the testing trophy, I would have understood the implications of just writing unit tests. I could have explored different testing approaches, and I could have maximized the power of my tests. So the testing trophy captures the main different types of tests, as well as their implications or return on investment. The trophy includes four different types of tests. So let's go through each type of test, understand the implications of the test, and learn how to integrate the type of test into your .NET application. Starting at the bottom of the testing trophy, we have static testing. So these catch type errors, compile errors, typos, etc., and they're gonna warn you before you even compile your code, and sometimes they might block you from compiling your code altogether. These are low effort, they report in real time so we get instant feedback while we're typing, and they're incredibly valuable during development because we don't have to compile our code or run our code in order to catch silly mistakes. But obviously these tests can only get you so far, of course, they're not going to be able to test your business logic or run your code. In Visual Studio, we get this type of testing for free. We'll get compile errors reported to us automatically, and Visual Studio will also run static analysis in the background to warn us about any potential issues in our code. Moving up the testing trophy, we have unit tests. So unit tests verify that an isolated unit of code behaves as expected. That said, you might have to leverage a lot of mocking to ensure that you're isolating the unit under test. Unit tests are fast, or at least they're supposed to be. They're somewhat low effort, depending on how much mocking you have to do. They're really good for testing edge cases. You can pass in a bunch of inputs and outputs and get quick results on your tests. And they're great for code coverage if you care about vanity metrics. On the other hand, as I alluded to in my personal story, unit tests can be brittle if they rely on too much mocking. And also unit tests don't give much feedback about how the application works as a whole. Overall, I think unit tests are great for testing core business logic, edge cases, utility functions, but not things like getters and setters, of course, or any kind of pass-throughs like a view model, for example, that just delegates to another service and doesn't have much logic. Nonetheless, unit tests are still beneficial in some cases, so let's implement one. In our solution, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. There's plenty of different testing libraries out there, but I prefer NUnit, so I'm gonna create an NUnit test project. I'm gonna name this test project the name of my application, Reservim.test. I'll target the .NET version that matches the application that I wanna test, and create. Now for this example, I'm gonna leverage a unit test for testing some core business logic. So I wanna ensure that this toString method on my room ID value object returns a string that satisfies the requirements for a room ID string. So in my test project, I'm gonna match the structure of the application I wanna test. So I'm gonna add the new folder first for models, cause that's where the room ID class lives. And inside this folder, I'm gonna add a new class for the room ID test. And in order to test the room ID class that lives in our reservoir project, we're gonna have to add a project reference from the test project to our application. Now in our ReamID test class, we can write our first test. So we're gonna create a function that represents our tests and what we want to test. We wanna test the toString method on our ReamID, and we wanna assert that it returns a unique ReamID. And since this function represents a test, we're gonna mark it with the test attribute as part of NUnit. And now following the philosophy of arrange, act, and assert, let's write our test. So first we're going to arrange, and this involves just instantiating the ReamID that we're gonna test. 
Now we want to act, so we're going to execute the method that we're testing, and that's toString on the room ID. And lastly, we want to assert the most important part of testing. We want to assert that the room ID string is equal to what we expect depending on our room ID. And now in Visual Studio, if we come over to the test explorer, we can see our test in here and we can run it and our test passes and runs pretty quick. Moving on to my favorite part of the testing trophy, we have integration tests. A wise man once said, write tests, not too many, mostly integration. So integration tests verify that several units of code work together and behave as expected. It involves very little mocking, although external interactions such as file system, database, or API interactions should still be mocked. Integration tests are still pretty fast. They're low effort to write in my opinion, although there is some upfront medium effort in setting up reusable mocks for external interactions. With little mocking and running several units of code together, integration tests can give you lots of feedback regarding how your application is actually working. And easily the greatest benefit of integration tests is you end up with less brittle tests, which allows easy refactoring and regression. Overall, I think integration tests are great for testing the integration points of your application. So for example, a view model in an MVVM application is gonna integrate things like commands and services together. So rather than writing a brittle unit test for the view model, why not leverage an integration test and make sure that the view model is correctly integrating things like commands and services together all the way down to your API or database layer and get more feedback about how your application or your view model is behaving. Actually, rather than talking about it, let's integration test a view model all the way down to the database layer. Similar to unit tests, integration tests are run with a test runner such as NUnit. So that being said, it's perfectly fine to put integration tests in the same test project as unit tests. Now for our integration tests, we want to assert that the make reservation view model will create a reservation in our database when we submit. So we're going to be testing the make reservation view model all the way through the make reservation command down through the hotel store to make a reservation, through our actual hotel to make a reservation, through our reservation book to add a reservation, all the way down to our iReservation creator, which in our case saves the reservation to the database. So this integration test is gonna give us a lot of confidence that making reservations works. So in our test project, again, matching the structure of our application, we're gonna create a new folder for view models. And in this folder, create a new class for the make reservation view model test. Similar to our unit test, we're gonna create a function that represents our test and we're gonna mark it with the end unit test attribute. So we wanna test that executing the submit command with a valid reservation will create the reservation in our database. Now, since this is an integration test, we wanna make sure that the make reservation view model has all of the dependencies that we need. And as I laid out, there are quite a lot of dependencies. So in my opinion, I found the best way to manage this is with a dependency injection container in your test. So we'll create a new service collection and simply register all of the required dependencies for the make reservation view model. I would also recommend extracting this somewhere so that you can reuse it between tests or if possible, importing the service collection that you use in your actual application for your integration tests. But for this demo, we're just gonna define the service collection within our test. One key thing to point out with this service collection is we are registering an in-memory DB context. So this DB context is not going to be hitting an actual database file. It's gonna be working in memory. So we're essentially mocking our external interaction to our database. And this is key because it's gonna make our test execute faster. And we won't have to worry about any setup or teardown for an actual database file or server between tests. Now we can build our service provider. And for this test, we're gonna be integrating with our database. So before we do anything, we're gonna to have to run migrations against that in-memory database so that we have all the database tables spun up that we're gonna interact with. Now we can resolve our make reservation view model from dependency injection. And we can take that view model and fill out the required fields for submitting a new reservation. Then we can take our submit command and execute it, which is gonna funnel down all the way to our database and create our new reservation. So that said, we can take our in-memory DB context and try to find the reservation in our database that matches the reservation we just tried to create. And then we can assert that the reservation was created and is not null. And if we run this integration test, it passes. It's still kind of fast, at least less than a second. 
But most importantly, we verified a critical part of our application is behaving as expected. Now last, but certainly not least, at the top of the testing trophy, we have functional or end-to-end -end testing. These types of tests verify that your application starts up and runs successfully, and they also verify that your application satisfies features from a user or client perspective. That said, we're literally going to run the application and interact with the application from the outside. Now, I've made a distinction here between functional versus end-to-end -end tests. And although these tests take the same approach of interacting with the application from the outside, they are significantly different. So functional tests involve testing your application in isolation and using mocks to interact with databases, APIs, or anything outside of your application. Whereas end-to-end -end tests, on the other hand, involve hitting real databases, real APIs, etc., in some sort of test environment. While end-to-end -end tests will give you a lot of feedback regarding how your system is performing as a whole, it can be a lot of effort to maintain a test environment, and it's certainly frustrating when tests in your application are failing just because some kind of API or database isn't working correctly in your test environment. So functional testing and running your application against mocks can be very helpful in avoiding the issues with test environments or end-to-end -end testing altogether. And functional tests will still give you a lot of feedback regarding how your application is behaving. So the main benefits of functional or end-to-end -end testing, as I've mentioned, you get a lot of feedback regarding your application. It's satisfying to see some kind of bot interact and verify your application is working. It makes refactoring easy because of course, these tests are interacting with your app from the outside. It's not tied to any kind of structure in your code. So you can refactor all you want and regression test. But on the other hand, these types of tests take a lot of effort to set up, maintain, write, and they take a while to run in general. It can take multiple seconds for your test to execute. So that being said, functional or end-to-end -end tests are best used for testing the core use cases of your application. You wouldn't want to have a bunch of end-to-end -end tests that test every single little condition in your application because it would require a lot of maintenance your test suite would be slow and then your prs would take forever to get merged now as i mentioned functional or end-to-end -end tests take significant effort to set up so i'm not going to be demonstrating these tests here but i have quite a few videos and even a live stream where i dig into functional and end-to-end -end testing topics so i'll make sure to link those and with that we have covered the testing trophy we've gone over static unit integration functional, and end-to-end -end testing. So next time you're writing a test, think about the testing trophy. Are you choosing the right test for the scenario? Will this type of test have maximum return on investment? Is this a brutal test? Am I mocking too much? These are just a few questions that might come up when you're attempting to test your application. And really the best way to get good at answering these questions per scenario is with practice and experience. So that being said, Review the testing trophy often, keep it in mind, make sure you understand it, and ultimately maximize the return on investment from testing your application.